Hello guys, welcome to a new video. Uh, in this opportunity I want to talk about vibrations of couple masses. Uh, we have a here a simple system of vibrating mass points. Um, we consider three vibration of two mass points. Right here we have mass one and mass two. They are fixed to two walls by springs of equal spring constant K. We have three springs of constant K as is shown on this illustration. These two mass points, they will have equal masses and the displacement from rest positions are denoted by X1 and X2. Okay guys, X1 and X2 respectively. Um, we will consider only vibrations along the line connecting the mass points. So we will have only horizontal vibrations on this problem. When, the displa when displacing the mass one from rest position, we will have a force due to the first spring. So let's go deep into it. We will have when this mass moves, x1 is moving, mass 1 is moving to the right, okay? So, let's use a different color right here. So from the rest position, mass 1 is moving to the right. Um, we will have a force act due to the uh, spring. Okay, so when the mass is moving to the right, this spring is pulling the mass to the opposite direction, I mean to the left. So we will have, as you know, the hook low, do you remember, right? Hook low. We will have a force that is equal to minus K multiplying the displacement, all right? Um, on this mass, we know that the force is equal to mass multiplying the acceleration. Well, we know that the acceleration is the second derivative of the position with respect to time, okay? So we will have this is equal mass multiplying x to dots, okay? Well, if we have this mass number one moving to the right, we will have the spring force pulling to the left. So for the mass one, we will have the, the mass multiplying the acceleration is equal to minus, is x1 because it says mass one, minus spring constant x1 Okay, but we have another spring. So this is spring, we have this is spring pulling, we have this is spring pulling to the right. This is spring in the middle of the two masses is pulling mass one to the right. Okay. Um, this spring is, it has an elongation, a relative elongation between the positions X2 and X1. So this spring is gonna have a relative elongation. And this relative elongation is, because this is moving X1, right? This spring is moving X1, this spring is moving x2, I'm sorry, this mass is moving x1, mass 2 is moving x2, and this spring has an elongation x1, and this one has an elongation n2. So the spring in the middle is gonna have a relative elongation between x2 and x1, and is equal to x2 minus x1. Okay, so 
x2 minus s1. I will write it down here. x2 minus x1. Um, when the mass 1 is moving to the right, this spring in the middle is pulling the mass to the same direction. So we will have uh, another force due to this spring equal to plus k, the spring constant, multiplying by the relative elongation of the spring in the middle, x2 minus s1. Okay? So, so we can we can write this equation here and let's write it down like this m s1 two dots is equal to minus k x1 plus k x2 minus s1 okay let's call this equation equation number one okay guys and i will highlight it okay come back to the illustration again i will erase this first equation and i will analyze the i will analyze the x uh, the mass two mass number two okay we have this mass number two moving to the right because initially it was at rest right here and now it is right here and it moved an x2 displacement okay mass one moved x1 displacement is displacement to the right as well so the whole spring is moving to the to the right okay so when this mass is moving to the right mass 2 is moving to the right it will have a force m multiplying x2 two dots to the right okay so when this one is moving to the right this spring is pulling the mass to the left okay and this spring is pulling the mass to the right to the left as well okay because this spring in the middle is contracting it is contracting it's moving to the right but at the same time it's contracting okay so at this end this spring in the middle is move is pulling to the left but at this end the spring in the middle is pulling to the right to the right so it is moving as a whole thing to the right as a whole thing the spring in the middle is moving to the right but the ends of the spring they are moving like that this end is moving to the left to the right and this end is moving to the left so that's that is that is happening on this string spring so with that in mind we will have that the force on the mass number two is equal to the force due to the spring to this spring is equal minus k x2 right because the mass is moving to the right this spring is pulling to the left and the force do it to this spring but at this point at this end okay do it to this spring but at this end and this is this force pulling to the left as well and we will have 
k multiplying the relative elongation of the spring in the middle is x2 minus x1. And we will have the equation for the mass 2. This will be the equation for mass 2. So we can write down that equation like m x2 two dots equal minus k x2 minus k x2 minus x1 we will call this equation equation number two okay so let's highlight it okay we will have those two equations and we will work with them now um, we will determine the we will find out the normal frequencies of the system okay so our goal on this problem is to find the normal frequencies the normal frequencies, okay? Let's use, let's use, um, the ansatz, let's use the ansatz, x1, equal to a1 cosine of omega t and x2 equal to a2 cosine of omega t. The ansatz are solutions that are proposed for this kind of problem. Both particles, they will vibrate with the same frequency uh, we will call that a frequency omega, okay? And they will vibrate with the same frequency, and the specific type of ansatz uh, will be a sine or cosine fusion of the time, or a superposition of them. So we can use, for now, these ansatz, these two solutions for this problem, okay? So um, we will do something here we will derivate the let's call these equations equations number um, okay the equations we will find the first derivative of x1 is going to be x1 dot okay is the first derivative with respect to time um, this is going to be minus a1 omega and the derivative we are using the rule chain uh, the rule chain the chain rule we use the derivative and this is sine of omega t we know that the derivative of cosine is min minus sine and we take the constant part the omega out of the equation, right? Um, this is the result. Okay? And the same for, we want to know the second derivative with respect to the time of x1 is going to be x1 two dots. We do the same as we did with the first derivative is going to be minus a1 omega squared derivative of sine is cosine cosine of omega t okay and we have that second derivative with respect to time and we do something similar for the x2 solution okay the x2 solution would be something like x1 
x2 dot is equal to minus a2 derivative of cosine is sine but the argument is multiplying the, the frequency and the frequency is constant so we can take it out omega is the same is the derivative of omega t was the derivative of omega t with respect to time is omega multiplying the derivative of the cosine function that is sine function negative but we, we wrote down the negative just um, first here so sine of omega t okay guys sine of omega t and the second derivative with respect to time of x2 is equal to minus a2 derivative of omega t is omega but we have an omega already that's omega squared multiplying the derivative of the sine function is cosine of omega t okay and i will highlight it but with a different color in this case yellow there we go so we have those derivatives now I will replace these four equations into equations number one and number two respectively okay so let's do that on the next page when we replace the when we replace the um, s1 dot and s and s1 two dots into number one equation we will have the following we will have let's say replacing s1 into equation number one we get we get m minus a1 omega square cosine of omega t equal to minus k multiplying a1 cosine of omega t plus k let's do something easier plus plus k multiplying a2 cosine of omega t minus a1 cosine of omega t okay guys um, let's see what we get here okay this cosine is a common factor this cosine function is a common factor on each term of the equation so because we have that common factor of each term of the equation we can eliminate it right so we can eliminate this cosine equation because it's on each term and they eliminate it's like dividing the whole equation by cosine of omega t and it's going to cancel real fast when we do that we get minus m a1 omega square equal to minus k a1 plus k a2 minus k a1 okay what i'm gonna do is i will send this all these terms to the other side of the equation 
to get this form of the equation a m a1 omega squared equal to oh sorry equal to no plus this term as add with this one so we'll have plus 2 k a1 okay on this term minus k a2 this is equal to 0 we can take common factor a1 of these two first terms and finally we get 2k minus n omega square taking common factor a1 out of the parentheses a1 minus k a2 equal to 0 let's call this equation number 3 Let's call that equation number three. Let that equation, uh, we will use that equation later. So let's do, if we do something similar with equation number two, so it's real easy to replace this one and this one into number two equation right into number two equation when we replace x x x dot s two dots and x two into number two we will get a similar equation similar equation to number three equation so we really don't replace the first derivative we replace just the original equation and the second derivative with respect to time okay we don't we don't replace as the first derivative we don't use it so this part so if we do something similar on the number two equation we will get something like this 2k minus m omega square x2 minus k a1 equal to 0 and let's call that equation number 4 this is totally similar to equation number 3 I mean the 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 um, the way on which we can calculate number four equation is totally e similar to how do we calculate equation number three that's why i don't do it we do absolutely something similar it's almost it's almost the same procedure so almost the same calculation so we can find equation number two just at the same way on the same way so we have equation number three and number four okay so they have a kind of um equation number three and number four they have the four of two linear homogeneous equations for the amplitudes a1 and a2 let's call we will talk about the amplitudes later okay amplitudes so as these two equations they have a four of two similar okay two linear homogeneous equations for the amplitudes a1 and a2 so we can we can do something let we i will write down these equations like this i will write it down like this equation number three i will write it like 2k minus 
m omega square a1 minus k a2 okay equal to zero a1 and a2 like that and the second equation the equation number four I will write it down like minus k a1 plus to k minus m omega square a2 equal zero so I will do something here a2 equal zero so if you can see if you can see we have these two these two equations on a1 and a2 okay this is a system um, we can write down that system like this two k minus m omega square minus k minus k two k minus m omega square a1 a2 and this is equal to zero okay so you can see this this is this okay this is this all right this is this and this is this okay so if we multiply this matrix this matrix to columns and two arrows two rows matrix with this one with this vector we will have this system okay is straightforward straightforward to resolve this problem multiplying these two matrix this matrix 2 by 2 with this vector we, we can come back to the system of two equations okay so this is straightforward to do that so the, this system uh, it will have um, it will have no trivial solutions only if the determinant of the matrix vanishes I mean if this condition meet if this condition is true I go m omega square okay 2k minus m omega square minus k minus k 2k minus m omega square if the determinant of this matrix is zero this problem will have no trivial solutions okay I mean we, we, we can find the frequencies of the problem okay so let's do something the determinant of this matrix is gonna be zero so we will multiply this and this by this this time this and this one with this one okay doing that 
we will get something like if we multiply this term and this term I will get 2k minus m omega square square and this with this okay and we will have minus k multiplying minus k is equal to zero then I will get 2k 2k minus n omega square square minus and minus is plus k square equal to zero okay let's apply the square of a midomial on this one right we remember a minus b square right we remember that formula right a minus b square is equal to a square plus b square minus 2 a b okay we remember that formula from the high school um, if we apply this formula into this first part we will get 4k square plus m square omega square minus 4k m square and the second term minus k square minus k square this is equal to zero okay this term okay let's do this term is equal with this 4k square minus k square is 3k square okay then we get m square I'm sorry here is 4 omega 4 minus 4 k m omega square plus 3 k square is equal to 0 okay let's divide each term of the equation by m square dividing each term of the equation by m square we will get omega square sorry m omega 4 minus 4k dividing m omega square plus 3k square dividing m square equal to 0 let's call this equation equation number 5 okay so um, let's call that equation equation number 5 yes let's see this is equation number 5 that equation number 5 is like this let's write down this equation a do you remember this equation right the quadratic equation a is a x squared plus b x plus c equals zero. This equation is similar to equation number four. Okay. If we call x equal omega square we have two similar equations okay and the solutions of these equations are x equal to minus b plus minus root square 
b squared minus 4ac dividing 2a. Okay? Where x is equal to, I'm making x equal to omega squared, and I will make a equal to 1 on equation number 5, v equal to 4k dividing m, and c equal to 3k squared dividing m squared. So we are making that equation, equation let's call this equation number 6. We are making equation number 6 equal to equation number 5, calling these variables of the equations like that, okay? Um, if we apply the solution of equation number 6, I mean this solution, calling a equal 1, b equal 4k dividing m, and c equal to 3k squared dividing m squared, we get the following equations. So if we do that, we apply equation number 7, we apply those solutions into number 6, right? Into number 5, sorry, we will have omega squared, that's x, x equal to minus b, right? But b is 4k dividing n, minus, minus 4k, okay, so we have minus b, but b is minus k dividing, minus 4k dividing n, we will have plus 4k dividing m, plus minus root square, of b square 4k minus 4k c minus 4k dividing m square minus minus 4 ac but a is 1 and c is 3k square dividing m square all this is through the square, okay? Dividing to a, but a is equal to one. Okay, two a, but a is equal to one. So we will have omega squared equal to plus four k dividing m plus minus Okay, this is 16, I will write the <laughs> root square later. This is 16, the first part is 16, k squared dividing m squared. This is 4 times 3 minus, minus 4 times 3 is 12, k squared dividing m squared. Okay, this is for the square. All this is dividing 2. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Then we have omega squared equal to plus 4k dividing m plus minus 16 k squared dividing m squared minus 12 k squared dividing m, m squared is equal to 4 k squared dividing m squared, all this dividing 2. Root the square on this one of 4 and root the square of k squared and m squared and all this is equal to omega square is equal to plus 4k dividing m 
más plus plus minus root square of 4 is 2 root square of k square is k and root square of n square is m dividing 2 okay we simplify this 4 divides this 2 and this 2 divides this 2 as well and that is equal to 2k dividing m plus minus k dividing m okay we have two solutions when omega squared is equal to when omega squared is equal to oh, I better go to the next page when omega squared is equal to two K dividing M plus K dividing M and we have the next solution equal to two K dividing M minus K dividing M right because we have plus and minus two solutions okay so these two solutions okay this first solution is omega square equal to 3k dividing m and this solution is equal as omega square equal to k dividing m so let's call this a this solution is solution number one and this solution solution number two okay so we have omega one equal to root square of 3k dividing m and omega two equal to root square of k dividing m so we have these two solutions for the frequencies these are the frequencies of the system okay guys um, the system is gonna vibrate with these two frequencies but what is gonna happen okay in the next video I will explain explain how the system vibrates okay when the system vibrates with omega one frequency and when the system vibrates with the omega two frequency these are called normal frequencies of the system of the system and these are the frequencies that the system has omega 1 and omega 2 okay uh, in the next video I will explain the vibration of the system um, thank you for watching this video see you next time with the next part of this problem um, see you in the next video the next video bye